Home Pierpont is to the east of the city of Nottingham and there's 270 acres of country park here. The National Water Sports Centre offers some of the most comprehensive water sports facilities in the world. The 2000 metre lake hosts many national and international rowing competitions and the River Trent is diverted down a fierce white water course here. There are plenty of mooring spots on the run up to home lock as well as a very slow tap, bins and an l sand disposal point. The large lock gates are mechanically opened and it's at this point the river starts to show its power and size. I moored up here for a number of days and was able to leave my car overnight in the water sports car park. Be aware the centre has recently introduced a parking charge of £2 a day and the exit is locked overnight. It was a really peaceful location, apart from the odd party boat that turned before the lock, but they don't travel late into the night. My journey will mean I head north, leaving Home Pierpont behind. The remaining suburbs of Nottingham cling to the north of the river and I pass the village of Radcliffe-on-Trent and through Stoke Lock. All the locks from now on are manned. I'll then wind my way downstream to Gunthorpe Lock, which is between the villages of Gunthorpe and East Bridgeford. I'll carry on out into the countryside and moor up on the other side of Hazelford Lock. So I've left home Pierpont, really nice place to moor up actually. Be careful if you're coming in to moor because there's some uh, metal bollards that are the entrance down to the rapids and of course the water flow is going down there. Now yesterday the water was like a mill pond on the river but underneath the flow was really strong and I was just coming back from the car and a narrow boat was coming in to moor up and he bashed against the, the metal bollards really quite hard and I could imagine everything falling out of cupboards inside if not damaging the hull. So just be aware of that, come in nice and wide and come in a little bit further down. But yesterday um, I moved my car to Newark, that's where I'm heading today. And I caught the bus back, back to Gamston and then walked back up to Home Pierpont. Today I'm not going as far as Newark because I don't know what the moorings like. Usually people leave moorings to go out on a cruise um, either very early in the morning or sort of mid-morning after they've had a nice breakfast. And that's the best time to arrive at a mooring because you're, you've got a, a pick of really good choices really. Um, but if I carry on to Newark today I won't arrive until mid to late afternoon and that's a little bit late for me because if all the moorings have taken I'll either get a not a very good mooring or I won't get a mooring at all and I'll have to carry on. So I'm going to moor up maybe one maybe two locks before Newark and then tomorrow morning I'll nip up nice and early and I get a nice mooring.
just downstream of the lock at Hazelford, there are a number of high and low moorings, depending on your boat size. The lock is based on an island between two large weirs. Water, toilets and bins are available here. Weirs prove a bit of a problem for migrating fish, such as salmon, trout and eels. The River Trent is the second longest river in England, and here at Hazelford, a programme is underway to help restore the eel population. The European eel is classified as critically endangered, as over the past 40 years, their numbers have declined by as much as 90%. Eels are an important part of the water environment, feeding on water bugs and dead and decaying animals. They are also tasty treats for herons and otters. EDF Energy has teamed up with conservation groups in two key areas of the Trent Valley. Idle Valley Nature Reserve near Redford and here at Hazelford Weir. The Canal and River Trust has employed these guys from Fish Tech Consulting in Devon to build a new eel pass. Funded by EDF Energy, a long aluminium trough has been built alongside the weir. Inside the trough is a bed of solid plastic studs fixed at a set gradient. There are two sizes of both gaps and studs. To an eel, this is like a ladder, and as they climb, they need the support of the studs. Larger eels will travel up the larger gaps, and the younger eels will use the lower, smaller studs. Today is the day this trough will be put into service, and water will be allowed to enter the top of the trough and flow downhill. When an eel reaches a weir, they travel back and forth trying to find a path up the river. As the water is way too fierce and strong at this weir, they are unable to migrate any further. However, when they reach this new trough, they will sense there is a water flow and instinctively try to climb. The trough has fixed lids so that wildlife can't just sit there picking out their lunch all day, and towards the top of the trough, it levels to give the eels a bit of a rest before they embark out into the river above the weir. Both these projects will help to reverse the declining trend in eel population in the UK. I stayed at Hazelford Lock for the night and then continued up the river to newer content. If you've not already subscribed, please do. It doesn't cost you anything and by clicking the bell icon, you'll be notified about future releases. Until next time, see you later.